Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and today I'm reviewing Elton John's 1989 album Sleeping With The Past. This was his 22nd studio album. It followed on from Red Strikes Back and preceded The One. The main single from it was a double A side of Sacrifice uh, and Healing Hands and there were also singles in Europe including Whispers and Blue Avenue. Now this was Elton and Bernie's attempt to reflect the songs of the 1960s, which had been so important to them when they were growing up. Artists such as Marvin Gaye, Otis Redding and Sam Cooke. It was a tribute to them in a similar way to Billy Joel's album An Innocent Man being a tribute to his childhood and teenage heroes and heroines. Now, Bernie was quoted as saying this is probably the strongest album we've ever made. Now, that is quite um, a claim, isn't it? And we'll be putting that to the test by looking at each track in turn and marking them out of 10. This is also notable for being Elton's final album before he went into rehab in 1990. And we're so grateful that he did because he's given us 30 more glorious years uh, of music. It was also the second album of his to use the Roland Digital Piano, and we'll be looking at that. He hasn't got his regular band here. He's got David Johnston with him uh, playing guitar, of course, but the others are a mixture of um, other musicians he was trying at the time. Apparently Elton and Bernie wrote 20 songs, but only chose 10 to be on the album. What happened to all of those other 10, uh, we'd like to know. Um, and also, it's worth noting that this idea of uh, nostalgia for Elton and Bernie, of course, wasn't new. We'd seen it um, in bucket loads on Captain Fantastic, but also on albums like Tumbleweed Connection, uh, Crocodile Rock, um, and songs like Roy Rogers on the Goodbye Yellow Brick Road album, all dealing with treasured memories of the past. Now, reviews of the album were fairly uh, lukewarm, so we'll have a look at the songs and see whether that was uh, merited or not. But of course, this did give Elton his first solo number one in the UK in the form of Sacrifice, although that was a song that had kind of a second life that led to its success. Let's have a look now at the brochure. There's Elton uh, sleeping with the pastor on the front page. Now we open that up, um, a nice picture there of uh, Elton and Bernie. There's all the musicians there listed in very small type, I have to say, um, and quite a good product as we go through, um, quite nicely designed, um, all the lyrics as you'd expect, some more healing hands there, um, and then that's, um, that's, that's it really, um, and um, there's the track listing on the back. So fairly good, no line of notes. Now, the first track on side one is Durban Deep. This is an anti-apartheid song, possibly inspired by Working in the Coal Mine, uh, which was a song for Lee Dorsey back in 1966. It's about black miners working all day for poor wages. Uh, listen to these lyrics from Bernie. I was born on Armen Corner. I pound rock face. I get lonely. But my family, they go hungry. Still the boss man, he calls us lazy. Um, so clearly a strong message here. Um, and the feeling of the whole song is of rock being chipped away uh, by anvils. Now, let's listen to the start of this. This is how it starts. Now, I think the drumming there is reminiscent of uh, sledgehammers hitting rock in that kind of rhythmic uh, pounding that must have gone on underground. Pretty hard work um, all day. Um, interestingly, Elton has set these lyrics to a reggae rhythm, a reggae rhythm where we have the emphasis on the second and the fourth beats in the bar rather than the first and the third. Uh, not too sure why that is the context for this song. Um, now, that type of um, drumming that we hear there, uh, whilst it is effective in creating that atmosphere, it ends up becoming rather irritating, I have to say. Um, Elton's vocal in this song um, is way back in the mix, and it has an echo on it, uh, which some producers have chosen to put in. Uh, again, I'm not quite sure why um, we have that on here. I would compare this track 
to something like um, Simple Life, the opening track on the one, or to This Town, the opening track on Ice on Fire. For me, both of these are superior tracks. Um, this one is an ineffectual opener, um, and I think, and it's almost a skip over track. It's not successful in what it's trying to achieve. Um, and for me, I, I think, you know, we, I'm wondering why this was chosen as the opener to set the scene um, on this. There are some good songs on this album, uh, especially on side one. Uh, unfortunately, this isn't one of them. And for me, it's a below average Elton track, which I'm going to give three out of ten. Track two is Healing Hands. This apparently was Bernie's update of a four top song, perhaps something like Reach Out, I'll Be There. Um, capturing that idea of the uh, uplifting Motown song. Uh, Elton himself has said it was inspired by the Impressions. And this is a kind of inspiring song that could be religious, but isn't. It's just about feeling better about life, about taking life's opportunities. Um, it appeared as a double A single with Sacrifice, although that was changed after a while. It's an uplifting, hopeful song that makes you feel good. Um, there's confident drumming at the start, there's a comfortable intro, and then the keyboards and guitar come in. Let's just listen to the start of it. And it's got uh, a refrain that says things like, you've got to wade into the water, you've got to learn to live again. And of course, this is what Elton would do when he came out of rehab. He learnt to live again and he learnt to be positive uh, about life. There's a glorious refrain on this uh, with great backing vocals. I don't really get the Motown feel from this, um, but I don't really need to because it's such a fine song um, which is uplifting and makes us feel positive. I would compare it a little bit with uh, another favourite of mine, Heels of the Wind from The Fox. Do you remember that song? That's got that same sort of uplifting, positive feel about it. Um, so this is a fine song to have as a second one uh, on the album. I like it very much. And I'm going to describe this as an excellent song. Give it eight out of ten. Track three starts like this. Elizabeth Rosenthal, in her book uh, on Elton John, describes this as a feathery ballad. It's all about the temptation of love from an ex-lover, um, but with the message is to leave me alone. I don't want that temptation anymore. I don't want these whispers. The piano in this sounds a little bit on the tinny side. Elton uses uh, quite a gentle voice on this one, um, but again, the echo is rather overdone. Um, some of the lyrics are a little bit on the silly side and whisper, whisper, whispering whispers. I think we get the idea on that one. Um, but overall, there are some decent descriptive lyrics in this when you dig a little bit deeper. Um, there's a nice fade out at the end, um, which works for a whole minute, actually. And that's certainly worth uh, listening to. Um, it's an unremarkable track, although fairly pleasant. I'm going to describe it as fairly good, I think. Fairly good track and give it. Five out of ten. Track number four is Club at the End of the Street. Now, this could be seen as a homage to the Drifters, possibly, and a lovely lyric here from Bernie creates this atmosphere of a neon-lit club at the end of the street, uh, a place to go to meet your friends, to have a good, relaxing time. Um, listen to these lyrics. From the alleyways where the catwalk gently sways. Um, beautifully done by uh, Bernie there and I think the setting by Elton really does do it justice here there's a lively intro there are smooth harmonies and there's a lovely hook on the refrain and um, we get a lovely bridge as well and then a saxophone break there from Vince Denham the whole thing comes together very comfortably and I would compare this to one of my favorite later tracks uh, recover your soul on the big picture for me, this is an almost perfect pop song uh, with high quality lyrics that name check Marvin Gaye. And I'm sure Marvin Gaye would have enjoyed singing this song. I like it so much, I put it in my final dream concert set list. 
Um, and um, you can always compare it with something like uh, Bruce Springsteen's um, Hungry Hearts as well. Everybody's got a hungry heart. It's got that kind of joyful, uplifting feel about it. So excellent track for me. I'm giving it eight out of ten. Track number five and the closer on size one is Sleeping With The Past. So this is all about the perils a woman faces clinging to a man's false love. Um, it's been compared to the Miracles uh, and their work in the 1970s. We've got an aggressive guitar intro, uh, a strong beat, and this general theme of moving on and looking ahead. Um, the refrain has some nice interplay with the backing vocalists, and they've got some funky organ keyboards there maybe played by Elton, not quite sure. My only criticism of this is that there's some brass on it, but it appears to be fake brass because there's no brass instrumentalist credited. It would be nice to have some real musicians there rather than synthetic brass. Um, it's, a, it's a lovely song. It's again, another uplifting one. Um, it's a good run of songs on this first side. And I'm gonna rate this as very good for Elton and give it seven out of 10. So let's look at um, the end of side one there and we end up with 31 marks from five tracks. That's a pretty good side of vinyl. Track number six is a stone's throw from Hurting. Uh, this has been covered by uh, Winona Judd, a country singer for the film Leap of Faith, which I think starred Steve Martin. It's about a doomed relationship where things get worse and they just can't escape from it. Elton uses a soft falsetto voice for this, uh, but I find that's too weak for the material, um, and we're not really channeling Marvin Gaye here. It's similar in structure to the song Sacrifice, but for me, it doesn't work. For me, it's rather dull, and it's rather boring. Uh, we've got some interesting lyrics there. We've got a runaway train on an empty track that's trying to run us down. Um, there's a decent lyric, but for me, the song is disappointing. The production, which is very spare, is also disappointing. Uh, and Elton sounds almost a bit like that 70s singer Alvin Stardust. I don't really remember him. Who's that dancing in the red dress? It's, it's that kind of feel uh, of the song. Um, but um, for me, this is the weakest song on the album, actually. Um, and it's not particularly interesting to listen to. I'm disappointed by this one, and I'm going to give it... Two out of ten. Now we know what's coming now. That's become a very familiar piece of Elton music, hasn't it? Um, this is Sacrifice, um, a ballad and the second single from the album. Um, now, initially when it was released, uh, this wasn't a hit, but the radio disc jockey Steve Wright played it quite a lot on Radio 1. And then it was taken up by more disc jockeys and it was re-released with Healing Hands as a double A side. It became Elton's first solo number one in the UK and was there for five weeks. It's about what happens to a married couple when the husband is unfaithful. Two hearts living in two separate worlds. And Bernie compared this to your song. Well, it's not quite as good as that, but it is quite a valid comparison. It's a quality pop single. It's got a lush soundscape. And I think it was a success because people could identify it with the feelings expressed in the song. It's also quite a simple song. I would compare it more maybe with one of my Elton's hidden gems, You Can Make History Young Again. It's got that sign of kind of pace, that kind of natural, comfortable feel about it. There is a brilliant cover version of this by Sinead O'Connor, which I will try to remember to link below. And that's certainly worth listening to. It's a completely different presentation of it to Elton's, but an interesting contrast. And I'm sure he was really pleased with that. So um, Sacrifice, while not being the most um, exciting song perhaps on the album, it's certainly one of the most memorable and effective. For me, a very good track, and I'm going to give it 7 out of 10. Now, track number eight is called I Never Knew Her Name, and it was kind of inspired possibly by Aretha Franklin's I Never Loved a Man the Way I Loved You. 
But it's nothing really like that song, of course, but it may have been inspired by it. A man in church witnesses an unknown couple getting married and falls for the woman. She walked like a mystery and she passed like summer rain. Lovely lyric there uh, from Bernie. Um, and the whole thing has a soul feel to it. However, it's not a particularly memorable song for me. It's, it's an OK song. It kind of um, justifies its existence on the album, uh, but it's not in the class of some of the others like Club at the End of the Street uh, for me. It's also got possibly some fake brass on there, either that or it's real brass players who are not credited. Uh, but again, I'm not keen on the fake brass. Uh, it's an average track for me, and I'm going to give it four out of ten. We've got a three in the bar waltz for track number nine called Amazes Me. Um, Elizabeth Rosenthal in her book calls it the most enchanting song on the album. Um, it's got an early 1960s feel. Uh, the backing sing singers are prominent. Uh, the lyric, maybe the heat babe could be this tune. Uh, that's one of the lines I picked out. I'm not exactly sure what that means. Uh, and I wouldn't describe this as one of uh, Bernie's greatest lyrics. Um, the the drum, drumming on this is rather clunky and over heavy for me. There's a decent guitar solo worth listening to from David Johnston. And there's some nice interplay with the backing vocals. Uh, but for me, again, this is another one where we've got this echo on the vocal, um, which is a slight letdown. Um, and this doesn't get more than an average track for me. Um, I'm going to give this one a uh, four out of ten. Track number ten is Blue Avenue, and it starts like this. I gotta quit this habit. It's like some drug for you. Now, this is a song describing possibly a failed marriage, a relationship on the rocks, and that's the wreck out on Blue Avenue. Um, now, um, a couple are going wrong. We've got some nice lyrics here from Bernie, like, you linger on my lips like confession. That's an interesting metaphor, isn't it? Um, and hit and run, hearts collide here. Is this about a real relationship? Uh, we don't know. But it certainly packs an emotional punch. Um, so what we have is some nice acoustic guitar work on this. Um, we've got a restrained, powerful, emotional setting from Alton. And this song packs a gentle punch. Um, this is accomplished songwriting from uh, Alton. And he's at his best on this, I think. Um, it's a lovely song, this. Uh, it's a beautiful song. It's powerful. Um, it's held back, um, but that's enough for it to get its message across. We've got some trumpet on this, but again, I don't think it's a real trumpet. I think it's a synthetic one. And it's a real shame because when it comes in, actually, it's a spine tingling moment. So I would love to have had a real instrument on that. Elizabeth Rosenthal in her book again describes as one of his more unsung masterpieces. And I would agree with both of those. It is unsung. And why isn't it sung a little bit more? Because I noticed a few of you chose this for your dream concert set list. Um, so this is a fine ending to the album, uh, this one. I think it's an excellent track and I'm going to give it 8 out of 10. So on side two there, we have a total of 25 marks. Uh, a couple of really good tracks there, Sacrifice uh, and Blue Avenue, both top quality. Uh, the other's just a little bit on the ordinary side, uh, which is perhaps why um, the album did get a little bit of criticism from the critics. Total marks for the 10 tracks was 56, giving it an average of 5.6 per track. There are two bonus tracks to look at. I'm going to do a separate video on there and also include some of your own comments about this album. So if you've got uh, opinions on what I've said, if you've got a favourite track uh, or some suggestions as to um, why this was effective or not, please write them below and I'll include them on my follow up video. So I've reviewed now about 250 Elton songs. And as you can see at the top there, we've got three songs on 10 points, Skyline Pigeon, Good Baylor Brick Road and Your Song. But several songs uh, now from this album, Sleeping With The Past, coming in in the eighth section. There they are, Healing Hands, 
Club at the end of the street and Blue Avenue. And at the bottom of the list there, we've still got Passengers and Solar Prestige, which unfortunately failed to score. We've only got one song from this album, uh, Stone's Throw from Hurting, which I think was a bit of a misfire. Uh, and that gets two out of ten from me. Now, this slide shows my ranking of songs within each category. So I've ranked the eights here. And as you can see, Club at the End of the Street is my overall 35th favourite song. Further down, Healing Hands comes in at 47 and Blue Avenue there at uh, 49, I think, just ahead of Sad Songs and Crocodile Rock. So how does the album rank overall? Well, you can see it coming in there at uh, really joint 10th along with The Fox, both getting 5.6 uh, marks per track. Goodbye, Brick Road is still out in front with Don't Shoot Me and Madman. Those are the top three. Are they going to change? Well, we'll find out when I've done all of them. So that's it from me. I really enjoy this album. It's a little bit uneven, but there are some really fine tracks on this, and I'm really glad that uh, Elton decided to do this project, uh, looking back on some of his musical heroes of the past. So I'm going to be back soon with another video. Please leave your comments below, subscribe if you wish, and don't forget, we're still standing.